In this video, you're going to learn what each field does and how to use rules and the properties of the fields to save you even more time, create a better selling experience for your clients and prevent them from making errors when completing your form. So here are the different fields and the different rules you can add to your document. If you need any help with DocuSign, you can drop me an email. You find my contact details below. You can book a strategy call with me. And if you want to learn how to use DocuSign more efficiently, just sign up for my free DocuSign cheat sheet. So let's start with the different types of fields. There's three main categories of fields. We've got the signature fields, which are signature and initials. Then you've got the automated fields. So we've got the date signed, the name, the email, the company and the title. I call these fields automated fields because they don't require your signer's input. So the date signed will print automatically. The name will print based on what the sender of the envelope is entering in the workflow at the time of sending the envelope. Same thing for the email. The company and the title, this depends whether the person who is the field, who the fields are assigned to, have a DocuSign account. If they do, then they're likely to have those details populated in their profile. If that's the case, those fields will print automatically whatever is saved in the profile. If that's not the case, then DocuSign will turn these fields into free text fields for your signer to provide the information. And lastly, we've got the data fields. So data fields, that's from, so we've got text, checkbox, drop down, radio button, payment, blah, 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 all the way until the envelope ID. So let's just go one by one to see what they do. So the data fields allow you to collect information from your signers and you can also customize them with rules. So for example, you can add a text field and to the right, we have properties for that field. We can either make it required, we can make it optional, we can also make it read-only. If it's required, your signers won't be able to skip the field. If it's optional, then your signers will be able to skip the field or they can also enter information in the field if they want to. They, if you make the field read-only, you can then enter something in there and uh, before you send the envelope yourself, the sender, and your signers will be able to read it, but they won't be able to change whatever is entered in there. Now, you can also customize the formatting and there's also various options that you can customize to affect how the field is going to interact with your signer when they view the document. Now let's move on to rules. So one of the rules that's very commonly used and helps a lot your signers is to use a data replication rule. So if you use two fields and customize the label of the field, so let's just say we'll call this one field one, and then we'll call the second one field two, what will happen is the data contained in one of the fields will always co automatically copy in all the fields that have the same label. So if I enter something in the first one, it copies in the second one. That's your replication rule. Another great rule for you to use is the conditional rule. So with conditional rules, you can decide to display or hide certain fields based on a condition. So let's just say that we letting our signers enter something in this field here. And then if they enter something, we can say that, well, you know what, if the signer enters something in this field, we also want them to enter something else in this field. But if they don't enter anything in this field, actually let's make it optional, then we don't want them to enter anything in this field. So we can hide it because they don't need to see it. So I can use this first field here and set up a condition that says that if my field here contains either a specific text or any text, then I want to display that thing. And so if I actually do enter something in here, then the signer will also be prompted to fill something else in this field. But if they skip this field, they won't even see that one. So that's very useful as well, depending on what information you're collecting from your signers. Because if you just make your fields optional all the time, your signers will be able to skip those fields. But if you make them required based on the condition, then it's harder for your signers to mess things up. The next rule that we can talk about is called the validation rule. So let's just say that this field was allowing you to collect information from your signers, such as a date of birth. When that's the case, you can just say, hey, I want to add a validation to this field, and this field will have to be formatted as a date, and I want the month to be first. So if the signer starts by entering, you know, 17th of September, which is the way we would write the dates in Europe, 
then DocuSign will reject that information. Checkboxes, they allow you to collect checks or you know ticks, however you call them, from your signers. You can customize rules as well. So you can say, hey, I want my signers to select at least or at most a certain number of fields or a range or exactly a set number. The radio buttons are very similar to checkboxes, but you can only select one out of a group. So the way you see that it's a group is by the looking at the blue outer line. And so if you click on the little plus here, that's going to add more radio buttons to that group. But if you drag a new radio button, that starts a new group. So you can select one here and you can select one here. But because these are part of the same group, you can't select this one. If you select it, it will unselect the one you selected just before. So be careful when you use radio buttons and checkboxes. Uh, you need to think about what it is that you're trying to achieve. The next field is the payment item. So the payment item allows you to collect payment from your signers. You've released a video on the topic in the past. So you can integrate with PayPal, with Stripe and other payment gateways. You can select uh, what payment methods you're going to accept, whether you want a credit card or ACH or even SIPA if you're in Europe. And select the currency, a fixed amount or a formula to use to determine what amount you're going to be collecting. So this is very useful to help your signers, you know, give you the money straight away without having to wait to send them a payment request after they've signed your contract, which is great. A drawing so this one is not used as much so this is very useful in accident report for insurance so if something happened your signers can just draw something they can also upload a photo through this field and we've got formula field formulas help you calculate values whether those values are time values or numbers they also allow you to create fancy conditions if you want to display or hide multiple fields based on multiple conditions they can be very useful as well I use them all the time and then we've got the attachment field, which allows your signers to upload any kind of attachment, whether it's a document or whether it's a photo, it's up to you. Then we've got the note field. The note field allow the sender to provide information on the document. So if I write, please input whatever, I don't know, I don't even know what I'm writing, but if I write something here, that's not gonna print on the final document. It's only going to show at the time the signers are signing the document. So that can be pretty useful to add extra information to help your signers. And then we've got the approve and the decline field. So approve is the equivalent of a signature. So it will allow someone to just say, yeah, I approve this transaction, but it's not gonna leave a visual mark on the document and then the decline, so it will cancel the envelope. Envelope ID, you might not have it on your document. This is just the unique identifier that DocuSign normally places at the top of every page to identify all the pages that are part of the same envelope to identify you know, the same transaction. If you move it around, you can just decide where you want it to go. So sometimes people just want it at the bottom of the page rather than the top, it doesn't really matter because many change to, in my opinion. I'll see you in the next one. Happy signing, bye.